Welcome to Book Root Readings, your channel for classic, nature, and living children's books. Click the subscribe button to be notified of new readings. Enjoy the story! Mr. Hermit Miser and the Neighborly Pumpkin by Christine Noble Govan Illustrated by Anne Merriman Peck All the houses in Gilly Green Lane were painted green and white. All except Mr. Hermit Miser's. It wasn't painted at all. All the windows in the green and white houses on Gilly Green Lane had flower boxes in them, except the windows in the last house, which was Mr. Hermit Miser's. It had rags stuffed in the windows to keep the wind out. All the cats in Gilly Green Lane were plump and clean. They slept on the doorsteps in the summer and by the warm fire in the winter. All but Mr. Hermit Miser's cat. It was thin and its fur was in patches. It slept on the roof and spat at people. All the yards in Gilly Green Lane were trim and neat with beds of bright flowers. All except the yard at the end of the street. This one was Mr. Hermit Miser's. It had only weeds, and the weeds were never cut unless the policeman, Mr. Snoopstagel, came by on his bicycle and said, Cut those weeds at once or we will fine you. Because of the mosquitoes and things, you see. Then Mr. Hermit Miser would cut his weeds. He always cut them himself for he would never pay a small boy to do it. He would cut them with awful thwacks and swacks as if he were fighting Mr. Snoopstagel. Then he would go into his tumble-down house and let the weeds grow some more. He hoped that winter would cut them down before he had to do it again. One spring day, Mr. Hermit Miser came out into his yard. Right in the very middle of his lawn, he saw two sturdy green leaves. He walked over and stared at the green leaves a long time. Then he went back into the house. The next day, Mr. Hermit Miser came out and looked at his lawn. Four green leaves and a little curly tail were growing there. He meant to cut them down, but the sickle was in the cellar. Anyway, it was rusty, so he put off doing it. The next day, Mr. Hermit Miser went out and looked at his lawn. There were eight leaves and four tiny tails, and the stem on which the leaves were growing had grown to at least a foot long. It lay along the ground like a vine. This pleased Mr. Hermit Miser very much, because he liked most of all to get something for nothing. He decided not to cut down the leaves. Every morning when he got up, he went out to look at his vine. Every morning there were eight or ten more leaves, and a lot more of the stem, and dozens of little new curly tails. Best of all, Mr. Miser saw that if the vine kept on growing at this rate, he could just forget all about Mr. Snoopstagel. There wouldn't be any weeds to cut this year. The vine would cover them all up and keep them smothered out. Mr. Hermit Miser looked almost pleasant nowadays when he sat on his porch and watched his quick-growing vine. One day, when Mr. Hermit Miser came out to look at the vine, he found three beautiful golden blossoms on it. Then Mr. Hermit Miser actually smiled, for he knew that not only would the vine keep the weeds down, but that someday he would have pumpkins, maybe two or three, on the vine. If there was one thing in the world that Mr. Hermit Miser liked, it was rich, spicy, luscious, crisp pumpkin pie. Now, one day, Mr. Hermit Miser went out into his yard to look at his fine pumpkin vine. The stem and the bright leaves and the curly tails of the vine had grown in every direction. They had gone through the rickety fence on Mr. Miser's place where some of the slats were out. They had even come out in Mrs. Berman's yard next door. 
Mrs. Berman always said that she just couldn't stand Mr. Miser because he wouldn't paint his house. He wouldn't cut his weeds, and he wouldn't patch his fence or mend his windows. Worst of all, he was mean to his cat, and that made Mrs. Berman very, very angry. Mr. Miser didn't like Mrs. Berman either. When he saw that his beautiful pumpkin vine had gone through his fence and was growing in Mrs. Berman's yard, he made up his mind that he would go right over to get it. So he went around to Mrs. Berman's front gate. He walked down the neat brick walk to her trim little backyard. He bent over to pick up his naughty pumpkin vine and put it back into his own yard. But just as he leaned over, he heard Mrs. Berman's screen door slam and Mrs. Berman cry, Hermit miser, what are you doing in my backyard? Get out of here, scat! And she came toward him, shaking her broom at him. Mr. Miser was furious. He jumped up and down and shook his fist at Mrs. Berman. Mrs. Berman, he said, and his voice was rusty because he hardly ever spoke to anybody. Mrs. Berman, I've come for my own property, and I mean to take it back with me. Wait a bit, she said, and she, too, stooped over and looked at the vine. It has put down roots, she said. What grows in my own yard is mine. I just dare you to touch it. So Mr. Hermit Miser had to go home and leave his pumpkin vine growing in Mrs. Berman's yard. And Mrs. Berman watered it until it grew and grew and put out almost as many leaves and curly tails and yellow blossoms as Mr. Miser's part of the vine. Mr. Hermit Miser was so busy watching the part of the vine that grew in Mrs. Berman's yard that he forgot his own vine. One day, after the rain, Mr. Hermit Miser walked across the part of his yard that was left showing, and he saw that the pumpkin vine had burst through the fence on three other sides. It was now growing in Mrs. Berman's yard to the south. It was growing in Mrs. Brown's yard to the east, and in Miss Pitcher's yard to the north. And this made Mr. Miser hopping mad. The vine had walked out of the rusty front gate, which wouldn't shut because it needed mending. It was crawling right across the road. Anybody who came along could pick the pumpkins from it, if it ever had any pumpkins. Mr. Miser saw his pumpkin vine running away down the street. He saw that it would soon be just anybody's pumpkin vine. This made him so mad that he could hardly see. Mr. Miser dashed out of the gate to pull up his vine and bring it back into the yard again. Now, just about this time, Mr. Snoopstagel came by on his bicycle to see if Mr. Miser had cut his weeds. Mr. Snoopstagel rode along thinking how he would speak rather sharply to Mr. Miser. Just then, he caught sight of Mr. Miser's yard and the great upright green leaves with the beautiful golden blossoms showing through. Mr. Snoopstagel was so surprised that he forgot what he was doing. He pushed down on the pedals of the bicycle as hard as he could. At that moment, Mr. Miser rushed out of the front gate right into Mr. Snoopstagel's path. There was a terrible thump and a squeaking of bicycle tires. For a minute there was sort of a pinwheel of bicycle, Snoopstagel, Miser, and dust, all wound around with green vine. When the dust settled, the bicycle lay in one place. Mr. Snoopstagel lay in another. The vine looked as if it had been chewed by a cow. And Mr. Miser was crumpled up against Miss Pitcher's fence, groaning and holding his foot in his hand. Miss Pitcher came screaming. Mrs. Berman came clucking. And Mrs. Brown came running with a great bottle of liniment for injured limbs. But when they got Mr. Miser on his feet, it was plain that it would take more than liniment to mend him. They carried him into his house and laid him on a very dusty couch. 
The ladies all bustled around and looked for clean cloths and hot water. And Mr. Snoopstagel, pushing his bicycle, went off for the doctor. And that was how Mr. Miser's pumpkin vine got away from him. It grew and it grew and it grew in every direction. In every yard in which it grew, it bore pumpkins. The little green balls spread and swelled into big green balls. Finally, the green balls grew into round orange-colored pumpkins, and they grew in every yard but Mr. Miser's. All this time, poor Mr. Miser had his foot bound up in plaster and rags. He could do nothing but sit on the porch and watch his vine running away. The more it ran, the more sour and disagreeable Mr. Herman Miser got. How he hated the thought of his beautiful golden pumpkins being eaten by other people. It made him feel maddest of all because there were no pumpkins inside his own fence. If he were going to have any, he would have to go and get them back from his neighbors. And he hadn't spoken to his neighbors in years except to scold Mrs. Berman about keeping the vine in her yard. The summer went by, and the days began to get too chilly for Mr. Hermit Miser to sit on the porch. The pumpkins got so ripe and yellow they looked as if they would burst. Mr. Miser got so thin and yellow, because of all the jealous thoughts that were stewing around in him, that he looked as if he would burst. One night there was a frost. The next morning, Mr. Miser hobbled out into the yard and looked over the south fence at Mrs. Berman's pumpkin. He thought of how good it would taste in a big round pie. He couldn't bear to look at it for too long, so he hobbled over to the east fence. There he saw that Mrs. Brown had two pumpkins in her yard. And then he saw that Miss Pitcher had two in her yard and that out in the road, along the ditch, there were three more yellow pumpkins. Angrily, he went back to the house and chased the cat. Then he sat down and began to worry about how he could get his pumpkins back. By rights, thought Mr. Miser, gritting his teeth, they should all be mine. Mr. Miser walked all around his yard. He looked at all his runaway pumpkins. He worried all morning. He was so busy worrying that he forgot to eat any lunch, and he worried all afternoon. Then, just as it began to get dark, he decided what he would do. He would wait until it was as black as the inside of a hat. Then, he would crawl through the fence and he'd get his pumpkin from Mrs. Berman's yard. So when it was dark, he blew out his candle and went out of his rackety-packety house and closed the door behind him. He walked quietly through the yard and up to the fence. Then Mr. Hermit Miser got down and slid through the hole in the fence. It was very dark and the tall leaves of the pumpkin vine scratched him. But Mr. Hermit Miser was too excited to think. He kept reaching out here and there. He was feeling for the big, smooth, round pumpkin that he had seen that very morning, shining like gold in the sun. But he couldn't find it. He crawled and he felt, and he felt and he crawled. But still, he couldn't find the pumpkin. At last, he decided that he would start crawling close to the fence from one end of the garden to the other. Then... When he got there, he would crawl back again, just a few inches farther over, to the other end of the garden. And when he got there, he would crawl back again, just a few inches farther over, to the other end of the garden. And if he did that until he had been all over the garden, like a man plowing, he couldn't miss such a big thing as the pumpkin. So, Mr. Hermit Miser crawled. And he crawled, and he crawled, and he crawled. And still, he couldn't find the pumpkin. His hands got very sore and sticky, because he was squashing the vine. His face was hot and prickly, 
His knees were stiff and creaking, but still he couldn't find the pumpkin. Mr. Miser crawled until it seemed to him that he crawled all night. He must have crawled over that garden a dozen times. At last, he had to admit that the pumpkin just couldn't be there, so he picked himself up and went home. Mr. Hermit Miser was as mad as hops. The next morning, bright and early, he got up and went to look over Mrs. Berman's fence. There lay the pumpkin vine all trampled and mashed, and there stood Mrs. Berman looking as if she had a great joke all to herself. Looks as if some strange animal got in here last night, she said out loud to nobody. It's a blessing I harvested my pumpkin crop yesterday. At that, Mr. Hermit Miser made a noise like something blowing up and went galloping back to his own porch again. But after Mrs. Berman had gone into her own house, he went and looked at Miss Pitcher's pumpkins. He noticed just where they grew. Next, he went and looked at Mrs. Brown's pumpkins, and he noticed just where they grew. Then Mr. Hermit Miser said, Hmm, I'll sit on my porch and I'll watch all day. I'll get those pumpkins tonight if I never do another thing. And in the meantime, I'll get the pumpkins out of the street. I know I could get them. So he walked out and picked the three pumpkins which grew near the ditch. Then he carried them back, one at a time, into his own house. He felt a great deal better after this. He sat on the porch and watched the other pumpkins, and he felt almost happy. But the trouble was that Miss Pitcher lived on one side of Mr. Hermit Miser, and Mrs. Brown lived behind him. So he had to get up and move and watch one of the gardens a while. Then he moved back and watched the other garden a while. He just couldn't watch both gardens at once. At last, it got dark, and Mr. Hermit Miser climbed over the fence into Miss Pitcher's garden. He walked straight to the place where he had seen the pumpkins, but they weren't there anymore. He jumped up and down all over Miss Pitcher's part of the vine. Then he ran to his own backyard and jumped over Mrs. Brown's fence. He went straight to the place where her pumpkins were, but they weren't there any longer either. And then Mr. Miser was mad. He went home and slammed the door. He slammed it so hard that all the window panes that were left in the window in the front of his house fell out with a crash. This frightened the cat who humped her back and spat and ran up a tree. Mr. Miser was so mad that he forgot to eat any supper. He just sat in a chair all night and shivered and shook with the cold from the broken windows. When morning came, he felt very sad to think he had lost all but three of the pumpkins. He went and looked at them. The pumpkins were so round and yellow and bright and cheerful looking that they made him feel better right away. I'll have some pumpkin pies anyway, thought Mr. Hermit Miser, and I'll eat every crumb of them myself. I'll not give anybody a single bite. So he set out to make himself some pumpkin pies. He had never made a pumpkin pie, but he thought he could do it with a little planning. He mixed some dough, out of flour and water and a little salt, and he slapped it and he pounded it until it lay flat. Then he laid it in a pan. He set the pumpkin in the middle of it and popped it into the oven. Then he remembered that somewhere he read, sprinkle generously with sugar. He didn't like to do anything generously, but he did want a good pumpkin pie. So he put a whole handful of sugar right on top of the pumpkin, and then he put it back into the oven. Mr. Hermit Miser pulled his chair up in front of the stove and sat down to wait for his pie to cook. Soon, a most delightful smell began to come out of the oven and Mr. Hermit Miser took a deep breath. Then he looked over towards Mrs. Berman's house and frowned. There was a truly delightful smell coming from Mrs. Berman's house, 
But Mr. Miser couldn't smell it because the smell in his own house was getting stronger and stronger and stronger. And it wasn't so delightful now. It smelled like something burning. Mr. Hermit Miser got worried. It had been so long since he had cooked something in the oven that he thought perhaps he had forgotten how baking smells. So he waited a little while longer. But not much longer, because soon the smell got so strong that he couldn't stand it. So he opened the door of the oven. Oh my! There was the dough, hard and white, like stone. And there was the pumpkin, sort of wilted, and the sugar all black and smoking. Mr. Miser had a fit. He grabbed a towel. He grabbed the pie. And he rushed to the door and threw it out. Then he sat down and got hopping mad all over again. But there were still two pumpkins left, and Mr. Hermit Miser was determined to have a pie. So he sat down and he thought and thought. At last he remembered that to make a pie, you must cut up the pumpkin and cook it first. When he remembered this, he jumped up. He stumbled over the cat as he rushed to the pantry to get another pumpkin. It was a huge pumpkin. He got a knife and cut the pumpkin in half. He cut it in two little chunks. He cut off the hard rind and put the chunks in a bucket. Presently, the bucket was full, so he got the dishpan. When that was full, he got the saucepans. When they were full, he still had some of the pumpkin left. He was very, very tired and felt that he never wanted to see a pumpkin again as long as he lived. So he went to bed. The next morning, he started on the pumpkin cutting again. He filled the coal scuttle and the scrap basket. He even had to put some pumpkin in his hat. And he still had to cook it and make the dough and bake the pie. This time, when he made the dough, he stewed the pumpkin that was in the dishpan. He put a lot of sugar in it. Then he put it in the oven. He pulled his chair up in front of the stove and sat down to wait. Nothing happened. Not a thing. Mr. Miser had forgotten to build a fire. When he had opened the oven door for about the 100th time and the pie wasn't cooked, he suddenly knew what the matter was, so he built the fire. He built a good one because he was simply starving and he could hardly wait to taste the pie. He built such a good fire that the stove got red hot and the pie burned to a crisp. Well, Mr. Miser worked for seven and a half days on those pumpkin pies and he never did make one. He tried frying them and broiling them. He baked them in saucers, and he baked them in bread pans. He mashed the pumpkin, and he put it through the food chopper, but it still didn't make a pie. The house was gummy with pumpkin. By this time, Mr. Miser had taken on a sort of coat of pumpkin, where little bits had stuck all over him. He used up all three of his pumpkins by now, and still he didn't have a pumpkin pie. When the last pie came out of the oven and looked worse than the first, Mr. Miser just cried. He went out on the back steps and sat down. He put his head on his knees, threw his apron over his head, and cried. When Mrs. Berman looked out of her kitchen window and saw Mr. Hermit Miser crying, she dropped a pan of potatoes and said, Mercy me! Almost at the same time, Miss Pitcher looked out of her window and saw Mr. Miser crying, and she said, Well, forevermore. Both of them ran out of their back gates to Mrs. Brown, who said, It's never so. Then all three went and stood in front of Mr. Miser and said, Hmm. When Mr. Miser heard them say, Hmm, he knew they had seen him crying. He was so ashamed that he wouldn't take his head from under his apron. He just sat up with the apron over his face and said gruffly, What do you want? Get out! But Mrs. Berman and Mrs. Brown 
had seen the pumpkin pies, dozens of them, which Mr. Hermit Miser had thrown out into the yard. Miss Pitcher was staring at the simply awful mess that was Mr. Miser's kitchen. Suddenly, the three friends looked at one another and shook their heads. They looked very sad for a minute, and then very glad for another. Then they all put their hands over their mouths because they were smiling. And Mrs. Berman said, What a shame to have wasted all those pumpkins. What were you trying to do with them? I was making a pie, said Mr. Miser, and his voice was stuffy with tears and apron. I wanted a pumpkin pie. And in spite of himself, he began to cry again. He's all worn out, said Mrs. Berman. And no wonder, all that work and nothing to show for it. And his pumpkins all wasted said Mrs. Brown, and such tasty ones, too. His kitchen, sighed Miss Pitcher. Why, I made pumpkin pies in mine, and you'd never know it. You made a pie? asked Mr. Hermit Miser, just letting one eye show from behind the apron. A lot of them, said Miss Pitcher, all as smooth and spicy and fine as you'd hope to see. Such flavor that pumpkin had. I've already eaten two of mine, and Mrs. Brown sighed. I don't believe I ever made such crust. Were they spicy? asked Mr. Miser, wiping his eyes on the apron. Mmm, said Mrs. Brown. And sort of cracked across the top? And brown and custardy? asked Mr. Miser, his voice trembling. Mine were, said Mrs. Berman, with the pumpkin just drawing away from the crust. Mmm, and she winked at Mrs. Brown. I can't stand it, wept Mr. Miser. Everybody has a pie but me, and they were my pumpkins. He was just ready to jump up and down in one of his rages when Mrs. Berman said, Listen, Mr. Miser, how would you like a big, big slice of nice golden brown pie? After all, they were your pumpkins, and I think you should have them back. But they're made into pies now, and we made the pies. They've got our eggs and butter. Oh, do you put eggs and butter in them? Asked Mr. Miser, surprised. Mrs. Berman nodded. And sugar and spice and lots of good rich milk. And a little salt to set all that off, said Miss Pitcher. No wonder, said Mr. Hermit Miser, and his eyes filled with tears again. Now listen here, said Mrs. Berman. You can have your pumpkins, all made into pies, too, if you'll do a few things to get them. What? asked Mr. Miser eagerly. Well, that fence between your yard and mine, it needs mending, and it needs painting. I'll do it, said Mr. Miser. And your house needs the same, said Mrs. Brown. I'll, I'll fix that too, said Mr. Miser weakly. And the cat, said Miss Pitcher. And all three said, yes, that cat. You'll have to feed it and wash the front step so the cat will have a place to sun itself. All right, said Mr. Miser sulkily. When do I get my pies? When you've done all that, said the three. What? You mean I can't have my pies until I've mended the fence and painted the house and fattened the cat and... We'll help you, said Mrs. Brown. We'll help you and all the neighbors will help you. The neighbors don't like me, said Mr. Hermit Miser and hung his head. They will, if you like them, said Mrs. Brown. Come on. And so the neighbors came. They cleaned and painted the house inside and out. They mended the windows and scrubbed the steps. They cleaned up the yard and they fed the cat with cream and fish. They brought new pots and pans, all green and white, for Mr. Miser's kitchen. They even brought him a cookbook. Last of all, they brought the pies over. There were dozens and dozens of round, spicy, sweet, crusty pumpkin pies. The neighbors laid them out on tables all through the house. When Mr. Miser saw them, he said, 
I never could eat all these pies in years and years. I guess my neighbors will have to keep on helping me. And so they did. They ate pie, and they ate pie, and ate pie, until there was just one left. Mr. Miser put it on his pantry shelf for breakfast. And when they left, Mr. Miser said, I never, never again will let my house get shabby and dirty. I never, never will let my fence go broken and unpainted. And I never, never will be mad at anybody again. Thank you. And everybody cheered. Then they all went away. Mr. Hermit Miser sat by his fire with his cat, which was purring. The freshly painted little house was neat and clean, but it was not painted green and white like all the other houses in Gilly Green Lane. Oh, no. It was bright yellow with green shutters, like a pumpkin with leaves, because Mr. Hermit Miser said that he never wanted to forget that it had been his pumpkin vine which had made his neighbors into friends. 